talking to Mark Galea. Mark. Hello. Hi. How are you, mate? Nice to see you again. Yes, it is. And Long I was, time. <laughs> it was. And when we got on, I said, we were both much hairier than the yeah. last <laughs> you got a, a fantastic beard, I'm saying. It's better yeah. than mine. <laughs> Over <laughs> four to now, eh? <laughs> So, first question normally is, what do you yeah. do? What I do, I play guitar and I teach guitar. I've been doing that for 23 years, I think, something like that. Mm, mm, cool. Now, you told me some amazing stories about how you got involved. And, and I, I've got, you know, I want you to tell those stories again because they're, they're fabulous. So let's, let's go back to, because you're, you're based... In Malta. Malta, yes. Uh, yes. A, a very small island, only 27 kilometers from one side to the other. But it is a nightmare for traffic. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've just, you're just telling yeah, me. So, playing. but you've got, you've actually got quite a good music thing going out there, haven't you? You've got things that. <laughs> small yes. yes, for a small island, we can say we are very lucky because we have a lot of opportunities where to play, you know, pubs. Uh, if you are w- weddings, you know, concerts. So, yes. Yes, it's good. Yeah, it is good. Yeah. Um, so when did, when did you sort of get involved in playing the guitar? I mean, is it, 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 was it something that at the very beginning that you were, you know, when you were very young, you were doing? I wanted to be a, a guitar player at age 11, you know, so... There was no computer, so mobiles at that time, you know, I was like first met on f- football, you know, always playing football. Then when I heard Queen, I said, no, I want to be a rock star. Yes. Uh, so my first intention was to play bass because I thought that the um, guitar was not my instrument because my father used to play guitar in church. Oh. And that helped me a lot because when I was young, I used to go with him and they gave me a small guitar and I was always doing this, you know, with the right hand. So I have, I, I say that I have a, a very good right hand because of that. And uh, then I decided that I wanted to learn the bass because I heard the sound of, of, of Queen, you know, and I said, that is not the sound of my father. So... I said that the, the, the el bass was making that el particular sound. And uh, then someone told me, no, that's the guitar. <laughs> so I changed my mind and I started learning the guitar. But that time was very, dif- was very different, you know. We, we didn't have any YouTube, you know, to learn mm. lessons. And the process was very long, you know. It took me long until I understand that there was a scale or something that... Uh, um, basically, that, that, that's it, you know, I'm 43 today, and I've been playing since 11, 24th November 1991, exact date, that I decided that I want to do this for my whole life. Yeah. Now, because obviously, being in Malta, you, yeah. you've got quite, a, there are lots of different influences there, aren't there? Because, you, you know, you, you've got... Italian television for what, you know. Yes, um, Italian television. Uh, <laughs> it was very popular. Uh, yeah. But you've got, you've got a lot days. of influences. You've got a lot of, you know, uh-huh. music and stuff. So, um, and, and, all, and, and you were saying that your, your, your dad used to play in the church. And, of course, you've got a lot of churches in the... A lot of churches. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I have never seen so many churches in one place. Yeah, <laughs> It's astonishing. Yes. It's an astonishing place. I mean, it is yeah. very beautiful, Walter, I must say. Really yeah. Interesting place. Um, so, you, obviously, you see, what, I'm, what interested me when I came out to you um, is I came out and did some examining, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. you exactly. came twice. 
Yes, I did come to us, yeah. And I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, and uh, I, I'm always interested in like what's going on culturally in, in, in a place, musically, you know, because obviously that's where you get... Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. Okay. You know, that's, that's where, you know, you, you might be playing music by, from somebody else, mm -hmm. but I mean, intrinsically, you're, you're feeding into, in, into the music what culturally is going on, um, in, you know, in yourself and all the rest of it. Um, but you, you were telling me a story about how it wasn't easy for you to, as you say, to learn because access to gear and you it know, wasn't easy in and... two ways. First, it wasn't easy to learn. I remember I used to record for one chord like C major and try to find all the notes that fits with that chord by ear, you know, with the cassette player and 1992, you know, play C major, trang, 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 and try to find the note. And then I bought, uh, it was guitar, total guitar. Yeah. And I saw the shape of a pentatonic. That was a game changer for that there is a scale. Then I discovered that there is a, t a tutor in Malta, Tony Patch, and I went to had some um, classes with him and it helped me a lot and changed like, the, uh, you know, because I used to be good, like uh, um, to uh, uh, play chords, you know, but to make a solo or to write a song, it was something more and different, you know. Then the other hard thing is to work full time doing this job, you know, um, where everyone is telling you you are crazy, you can't make it, even your own parents, that you are lazy, that you are not responsible. But I did, I never looked back. No. Um, I was hard headed, you know, I said, I want to do this thing you know, for the rest of my life. And I kept ignoring everyone. I had about 25 part-time jobs in my life. I did everything from cleaning carpets, waiter, you know, spent three months there to buy some gear, you know, an amp or a guitar, then leave and, you know. Try. Um, but then the game changer was that I met this particular person in Malta who heard me playing and told me, listen, you want to come and play in a musical, you know how to read music? I said, wow, that's everything, you know, I have been trying to do that. And at that time, I had 21. I have been doing this since 16, you know, full time, you know, trying. I left school early, you know. Um, that was a game changer for me because when I was went on, I said, listen, everyone is telling the um, truth. I have no gigs. I have no work. I'm studying like eight, eight hours, 10 hours a day, all for nothing, you know? And I started diverting to another thing, you know, at that time. And this person gave, um, got me back on track. You know, I said, no, I don't want this. And when I see myself in the other life that I was going to choose, which was video editing, I really like that, right. idea, you know, uh, but it's not me. No, but no, at, no. at that time, you know, there was something that I was interested in video editing or TV thing, you know, um, but this person then gave me a gig, then gave me a show, you know, then a TV, something on TV, and then I had a wedding, you know, and then so, so on and so forth. Right, okay, now, so when did you, you know, I, I, I'm just trying to lure you on to the, um, the equivalent of Big Brother here. Oh, uh, because this is, I, I love this story, Mark. I mean, you might not uh, want to, <laughs> but it's just so good. That is something that I forgot in my life. That is always something in my past, well, in my other life. But I will revived. tell it all. Well. <laughs> so, uh -huh. yeah. The, but the reason I'm saying this is that the thing that struck me about this is that your experience of playing the guitar was very similar to what happened to me and people older than me in in the UK, which isn't like that now because. If you wanted to do something like that, you could go to a college 
and you could do anything like that now. But in the back in the day, people would have said things like, "Oh no, that you don't be, you know, don't be daft. You're being stupid. You need to get a proper job." Yeah. You, need, you know, and all that sort of stuff, and and then you'll never make it, and and all these people are load of layered outs and you know lazy and all that sort of thing, right? Which is exactly what you've been saying. So you had to be very very clever, which I know you are at being able <laughs> to find your way into things, right? And um, when you told me that story, it, it was so brilliant. As I told you, I was ready to sell my like soul you know to yes. achieve what i yes. really want yeah, you know serve your soul. Yes. and that was one of the things that yeah. there was this tv show in malta it's called like a big brother and they were auditioning you know and i said i want to apply um if i apply today i sure that i will not go to be chosen but I was 21, I was so ambitious, and I was sure that I was going to be chosen. And when I signed the contract, I told them, listen, one thing, I want to go inside with the guitar. Yeah. So I was not going to be there. Like, I want to just one thing to yeah. people see me, you know, with the guitar. So that was the only idea, you know, I went to this TV show. Brilliant. So you were sitting around in the house playing guitar? Yeah, for two weeks, I think. Yes. It was there, you know, every day, you know. So the thing was with that, of course, is that when, because when I went out, I think it was the first time I came out to Bolton, and we went out somewhere and people kept looking at you like, yeah, yeah. Like double tap. Luckily, right? I and don't I, and have I, that and I said to you, I said to you, why do, do a lot of people know you here? Or something like that. Because it was like so obvious that people could like, they'd sort of look and then look again. And you went, oh, yeah. And then you told me that you'd been yeah, on the yeah, Big Brother yeah, program, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, <laughs> it was great because it really, it just makes you realize how important thinking outside the box with regard to things. And of course, you, you have to you have to do that in order to and establish. And then also, it was also a big step for my teaching because uh, after that program, I proposed something for um, local, local TV station that I do like a 10 series program, uh, how to learn your, your yeah. your guitar you know and also um information on guitar it's like who was like a Clapton Brian May you know and it was like 30 minutes every week and uh, it was a bit successful you know at that time I'm saying like 2010. So how old were you then when you did the 22. TV program? 22. 22. 22. Right. 22. So by then, 22 yeah uh -huh. two, two TV programs so okay a couple of weeks in the big brother house and then and this yeah, I had so Thank much you. energy at that time. I know my energy. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, just... I know, but come on. You, you know, you, what you lack in energy now, you got in wisdom, right? Yeah. That's what but... I'm telling myself, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but, um, but that's, that's amazing. So, but 22, you got, you got a TV program about playing the guitar. And that, I'm assuming that really sort of established you, you know, your credentials as, as a, as a player, yes. you know, people yes. recognize uh, you uh, now uh, as a guitar player, right? Yes, uh -huh. at that time, yes. Uh -huh. But as I said, I was lucky that it came in a time that I was like the diverting to other things because I was fed up of like go have a band, you know, yeah, practice yeah. with this band for six months. Then the bass player tell me, listen, I have an exam I can't come to the rehearsal or else I have a job I can't continue with this band and you put all the effort you know and, yeah yeah um, so I was like fed up you know in this life yeah and yeah. it's not easy to amalgamate with other professional people you know it's not you can't go to their gig and tell them listen uh, I can play with you you know it's it's not like that. It's like someone has to introduce you, you know, to them, you yeah. know, a bit by bit. 
until they all know you and they have the contact number and they can phone for their gigs, you know. But I remember I used to organize many gigs. If you remember, I brought many people here like John Wheatcroft, um, Phil, Phil Hillborn, you know. Yes. Now As I told you, about I that, much that energy. So you used to bring people over, didn't you? You used to. Yes, from the, because then at 24, uh, 2004, I found this place which uh, had then. There was a school in Malta that it was going to close. So I spoke with the owner and I took over it, you know. And it was called Euro Institute, where, where you came to do the exam. Yes. So I, I had that for around 10 years, I think. Right. Then I said, it's enough. Let's move on to something else. Yes, yes. But to make it more sustainable because it was so expensive to run a school, you know, all those rooms, you know, electricity to pay the teachers. I had a lot of expensive. I used to bring like master classes, organized master classes and concerts, you know, Neil, Neil Murray came also. A lot of people came. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. So, because um, I, I spoke to John Wheatcroft a little while ago, I actually interviewed him. And, uh, you know, they're great, great players, all, oh, all of those people. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And again, that's another important thing, isn't it? That, that thing of a community of, of, of musicians, you know, yes, just yes. even if they're just coming over to play for a few months or, or you know, for, for a couple of days or something, um, just for people to see those people at close quarters and be able to, mm -hmm. you know, listen to them or talk to them or whatever, I think it's... Is so inspiring because I think well, you know, teaching is about inspiring people, isn't it? Really, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And honestly, they were much more effective because today you see these master plus on YouTube. I'm saying like 15 years ago, 10 years ago, it wasn't that much accessible, you know, and you yeah. used to read about Phil Hillborn on Total Kitab on Kitarist magazine, you know. Nowadays, like you with you on COVID, you know, everything online. So it's harder to do something now today. Yes. Yes, it is. That's sort of ironic, isn't it? It's strange because you think because of everything being available and it's been easy to do things online, everything. But we're actually before I used to have 80 to come to this masterclass. If I will do one today, yeah. I will have 20. Yes, of course you will. And yes. it's, it's not sus, 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 sustainable, you know, for me. No, no. no but things no. change, don't they? Things you know, changed. Things change a lot. And But, you know, that sort of... Uh, I think what, the other thing that impressed me about this, and this is a, goes along with you, have, you know, getting these people in to do masterclasses and everything. It's the enthusiasm that you you had for the instrument, or well, you still have got for the instrument. I but, still have a yes, lot of enthusiasm. I, mean, I don't have energy to do things because I have a lot of work. And when you are working like three, four times a week and teaching, so if I'm off in the evening, honestly, I don't play the guitar. I do something no. else because I know, I've been I know that feeling. studying in the morning. You know, <laughs> sorry. I know that feeling. Um, yeah, because it's like I get in the car and I go to drive home and I put a podcast on and it's just people talking because I've, I've had enough now, you know. And it's and you sort of think, right, OK, but that's fair enough, you know. Cause, but I say, still, it gives me pleasure every day when I see someone and I show him something and I see his yes. face. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. the best feeling, you know. Yes, it is. Absolutely. When you get people playing stuff and, and you, you you get people realising actually they can do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is an amazing feeling. You feel good. It's an amazing yeah. feeling for them. Uh -huh. It's also an amazing feeling for you because it's like you flip to switch or something in there. And the best feeling is when you have like difficult um, students that they have like HD, HD or something yeah, like yeah. that, that they have an LSA at school, you know, and uh, and... After three months, they start doing the scales, right? They start sounding the chords, right? And yeah. they start having fun. And yeah. so that's a big 
no yeah. thing for you know yeah that no, is absolutely right i mean and well you you'll know this anyway because you know you, you teach but you realize that there's a lot of things going on where people are assessed as having something some condition mm-hmm. you know you quoted a couple there a learning problem mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and you realize that actually, once you take them out of an environment like school, Definitely. and you, you, you put them in a creative environment, some of these people are much better than average and because they're they, coming from things from another way. They start doing things yes. that you don't expect them and say, exactly. oh, wow, okay, well, it's interesting. You are, you are doing your string bending. I never showed you to do the string bending. So you're doing it, okay, with the wrong finger. Or with the, but you are feeling it, you know? Someone, yeah. someone else, I have to show him. I have to, if the most important thing is that you feel something, you know, okay, I show you the right way how to do it first with, with the right finger. But if you don't feel where you have to bend, you have to do the vibrato, I, I I can't show you that, you know, that's, so, yes, these people have that extra feeling, exactly. you know, that really impressed me. Okay, this is, this is a little story which is like this. There was a lad that I was teaching years and years ago, and he was obviously, this is before everybody had that, you know, they were on it if there was something wrong, that somebody was having a problem learning. So he wasn't really assessed as anything, but this lad was obviously had a lot of problems with picking up information. And he didn't know where he lived. Right. So if you said to him, like, I wanted to send a in the days you could send a book home or rest of it and it post things, he didn't know his address. Right. And it was like, well, what's the name of the road? I, I don't know. So he was obviously traumatized by something. Right? Anyway. First of all, he had problems learning some chords and all this stuff. And then one day we got him, you know, playing some scales and things like that. So I got him to, to play a little bit of a lead. And I think it was about within a week or two, he turned up and he started playing. He was playing blues. And I mean, seriously, he, he had, he could phrase. And I said, gosh, that sounds really good. I said, do you listen to the blues? He went, no. No. I don't even know what that is. And it was like, okay, I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, this lad became really good. And now he's, he's a professional bass player, right? So he's sort of transferred to bass. So you look at that and you go, I don't know what was going on there at all. So it's sort of like, it was, it was literally like some sort of, you know, revelation to this kid somehow. Yeah. And it went from this state to this one, like almost like overnight. And there's a couple of those examples. And, and he was definitely somebody who was, he'd struggled at school. Um, but the thing I was getting at is that some of them, they, they take their label becomes the thing that they become. Now, I'm not saying that they're not having problems. I'm not saying that. But the problem with the label with the, yeah, definitely. You understand what I'm saying here, don't definitely, you? Definitely. They become the label. Definitely. The label is the problem. It yes, is. The, definitely. Definitely. It is. And I think there's something with, with music, you can do this from another perspective where you can show them the map, you know, you can show them the scales and how to bend and, you know, how they play the chords and everything, but it's only a map. And if they suddenly come in and they've got another way of doing this thing, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, Definitely. and I think sometimes that is great for them, for their self confidence and their, self, their own self development. Definitely. Now, what's the situation out there with funding? Funding of you know musical instruments. I'm assuming they have to buy their own instruments and stuff like that. Do they? Definitely. Yes. Uh, everyone has to buy. But you mean uh, government funding or these stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they available, the- honestly. I used to be more like aware and to look for them like 10 years ago to apply maybe to get them. But now I'm not doing any more no, things no. of my own, you know? So yeah. I, honestly, I can't tell you, but I'm sure there are funds available if you want to study or you can apply something. 
Yeah, because all I was thinking is that you said something else to me that I thought was, and I've and I have actually spoken about this to a lot of guitar teachers in this country who sort of cringe about how much money they they should charge and all the rest of it, right? And I told them the story about how you organised your lessons in Malta because you said to me, "How much do you charge over there?" You know, I, I'm didn't you ask me the same time, no, the same price, like I used to charge. Yeah, because okay. you, said to, you, you said to me, well, you know, but, you know, the, 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 the going rate for lessons was like something like three pound an hour or something. It was just like, oh, my God, it's just co completely different. And of course, what you were doing was you were doing group lessons. In order I, to... I do group lessons. Exactly. So it's exactly. much more cheaper. For yes, me. exactly. But now. One second. So sorry. Yes, That's sir. why I, I told you about this guitar teacher in Malta. Because he used to teach group lessons, and like I was inspired by by him, you know, because you can't charge here twenty euros or thirty euros per lesson, you know. Uh, so if you have like four or five students, because with COVID I had to reduce classes, now I have four to five minutes class, not one hour. Um, uh, and yes, so yeah. that's so that's so that's how I do. So this was another thing that really struck me about how, you know, because I, I teach group lessons and all sorts of stuff, right? Depending on what it is that, mm -hmm. what, what the demand is for, right? But I, I've always been astounded that a lot of people in this country seem to have this thing that you're going to do something like this and like that, and you never change the, you know, you never think outside the box because they don't have to. And then, again, keep coming back to this thing. It's that, not easy to teach uh, in a group lesson with individual no. attention, you know, because I no. give individual attention to each one. So when I'm teaching this place and I'm hearing the one yes. playing the and sorry, that is not correct. Yeah, exactly. I continue. So, yes, exactly. so uh, you're, you're after playing, four hours yeah, of exactly. teaching, I will be like, like this because my mind is thinking this, so this. but that's interesting for me if I have an individual one and he pays me the same amount mm. after 20 minutes I will get bored myself yes even yes. him honestly I'm telling yes, you yes yes well there's only a certain amount that people can do in that period of time right if you're if you're teaching somebody for a long period of time and in fact after I finish this podcast I've got somebody having a lesson for an hour which is actually quite, it's quite a long time if you're good at teaching short lessons that are very intense. And if you have everything prepared before, I prepare everything for the students or that they have the notes. So I know going to say what I'm going to do today. And I spend the first five minutes thinking what I'm going to do. No, so I have, you prepare everything. I, I have a lot of food. I have hundreds of lessons, so I have no issue on that. And, you know, the students, you keep notes. For me, it's much more interesting. It's much more worth it for the student because he's not paying. He's paying five euro for the lesson, so he can afford it, you know. Exactly. Um, it's not that end of the day, you know. Um, and for me, it's also worth it. Yes, exactly. So it's this idea of being able to... Think outside the box with regard to how you do things and what, what it is that you, you want Sorry, to do. Sorry, I forgot something. I forgot something. So, but the first approach, it is not easy because when I tell them, listen, each time I have, I've been doing this for like 23 years and 23 years. The first um, question is, Sorry, I don't um, want to come to group lesson. Do you have individual lesson? I tell them, no problem. Come and try a lesson. It's free. If you don't like it, I then you can come individual lesson. Till now, everyone wanted a group lesson, you know, yeah. because they, they need to try first. Yes. Yeah, they do. Because yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. is scared of a group lesson. The, you know that uh, okay. I don't want to have young children with me, so I try to like the last lesson will be all. But as I'm telling you now, times are changed, and I'm having only one day for life lessons because I kept 
most of my my lessons are online, you know. Um, uh, so then I would use the lesson to 15 minutes for each one. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I have like a 15 minutes individual lesson. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's great that you, that, that adaptable actually not. And, uh, yeah. Because that, that's the thing, a lot of people, it must have been quite difficult actually in, um, in lockdown because you're only on a small island with a lot of people. So I'm assuming you, what did you do? Just, just could you not go out or? Lockdown was, was like everyone else, you know, you, you um, couldn't like um, go out, you know, um, schools were closed, like <laughs> everywhere is dead. And when I, when I changed to online, I was very scared because I said, first, people are not going to have any money to spare on guitar lessons. So I said, this is the end of me in lockdown. Two, I was trying to teach online for 20 years and never had one lesson. When I tell them no. online, now it is the other way around. When I tell them online, online, I prefer online. I prefer online. If they are totally beginners, I tell them, no, you have to come to a life lesson. But if yeah. they are playing, I, I have been teaching them for five years. It doesn't make any difference if it's live or online. If you have good internet connection, good sound, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because again, it's, it's how people pick up information and the rest of it. And again, I think when you're saying like earlier on, in those years before, lockdown people just didn't have the mindset that about online but yeah, yeah. As, as soon as as soon as we had the covid thing everybody had to do things online they had to change their their way of thinking it's a bit weird then because i have been teaching uh, um, students for three years and i have never met them live no so weird, for, isn't it? weird. if you think Whereas, about it it is I it's have very been teaching strange. them for three years and I never met them. And if when I used to do the exams, you know, yeah, because I stopped the exams, not anymore. Exams, they used to come here. Yeah, I said, oh, it's all you are. Oh, something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You suddenly <laughs> see that somebody's actually very tall <laughs> or not very tall. <laughs> Everybody looks the same, don't they? they? Said, wow, this is you, man. <laughs> No, 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 it's bizarre, it's bizarre. So what about your playing? What have you been doing? Because you, you do a lot of stuff, don't you? You work with all sorts of um, groups of music. It, it comes to my hand. I try to do it if it's not classical music, because I don't play classical music. Um, but I play weddings, you know, music shows. Yeah. Some of the music shows look amazing out there. I mean... Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of uh, TV shows, you know, uh, yeah. televised shows that requires a lot of work, a lot of rehearsals, you know, not that not that much work in playing wise, but a lot of rehearsal time, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's super fun. Yeah. Because all my friends are in this, city, so when I'm going to work, I'm going to meet one of my best friends or two of my best friends, so it's like total fun for me, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm assuming, again, because of being on Malta, you must be seeing the same people over and over again in different guises, surely. Uh, but, but, but I play in different situations, you know, for example, yeah, yeah. tonight I'm going to play with a person. Friday I have a band, different people. Sunday, same band, but I think they are different people. But always changing, you know, not always with the same four people. It's interesting stuff. It's cool. So there's also things you haven't sort of mentioned, which because you, you did, you know, you've come over to the UK and worked with, studied with people in front of you. Yes, 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 I, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you did, because I That's think. Right. When I, first met you, you've been over to, I think, some sort of RGT thing. Yes, I first time, first time, I think I went to the it was the year 2000, I had 20, I went to study with uh, our M. John Mizzaroli. Yeah. And yeah. 
then I did the exams of the IGT exams. I was also in the UK to do the diplomas. Yeah. Um, I think I've been three times to John Mazzarelli to have some lessons, like 2000, like 2004, something like 2005. So that's an interesting thing, because, I mean, not a lot of people know of him, really, do they? But he's an interesting character. Um, how did you find out about him? Just Okay, uh, so, um, honestly, <laughs> all the idea on lessons or how to do lessons, it was all thanks, thanks to him as well, because he gave me a lot of information I'm still using till this day. Yes, yes. And uh, I, still have info I still have information <laughs> that I still need to work on. I'm saying from back 2004, the guy, I love him. I, I didn't sp um, spoke to him because also he came to Malta. I, we, I did a show for him as well. I think the year was 2009 because I'm seeing a poster there. He, he came with his band. Um, he's an amazing player, you know, and uh, the, uh, his idea on how to map the fingerboard is fantastic, the work he gave me, you know, the knowledge, the books, the CDs, wow, overwhelming, you know, yeah, yeah. and I remember then we became friends, I used, I think the second time he told me you can, you, you can stay at my house, you know, and I, I used to have like an eight hour and class with him, you know. Right. Yeah. Those were the days, yeah? I yeah. still cherish them, you know, every day. Every yeah, day. That's, that's interesting, because, yeah, he certainly has a different sort of perspective. On things, oh, so. totally different perspective. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anything. Yeah, so, yeah, the sort of music of the spheres type. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But he play, when he starts playing, you know, all these things, you know, winter, but technically. And what still really a fashion, like, because today I'm 43. I'm, when I went lessons to him, John was, I think, over 60. He still has this passion, even at night. He's all day playing like from morning when he wakes up the night if you ask me now after i'm going to come from a gig what i'm going to do i'm not going to play the guitar for sure he plays the guitar you know he's passionate always playing always writing you know communicating wow it was like that you know in his 60s or 50s or oh, i don't know but i'm comparing him with myself, you know, today, which I'm 40, for me, if I'm off uh, at the evening, I don't want to play the game, or to jam, you know, or to, <laughs> because I've been playing for 10 hours, 11 hours, and I want something else. He's not like that. He's wanting guitar, all these images and uh, scales going to get there and chords wise and writing stuff. It's totally different. Amazing. I was lucky that I met him and I stayed yes. at his how house. Did you, how did you meet him though? How did just... you meet him? It's This is very strange. This is very well, strange. Well, yeah, this is what I'm... <laughs> I think no one believes me. <laughs> Even I still can't believe it. I remember, as I told you, the total guitar was a big uh, um, revelation for me. And I used to see this advert, you know, John Mizzaroli, guitar teacher, have been teaching for blah, 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 blah. And one day I wrote him a letter, like I, wrote, I didn't have any compute. I write him a letter. That's why I said, I saw one want lessons. I think two years passed. It was Sunday. Or a year was, but a lot of time passed. It was Sunday. I remember I was going out. I was around 19. The, fo the phone called out. Oh, at home, my mom told me someone is for me from the UK. Who oh, is going to call me from the UK? And I said, hi, I'm John Mizzaroli. You wrote me for lessons. I said, 
this is a joke. Why? Or a friend is doing this joke to me. I told him the first, how come he called me? Like, <laughs> I wrote him this letter ages ago. He said, you want to come to lessons? I have a space available like next month. Not going to miss this yes. Yes, definitely I'm coming. I arranged to find like 500 sterling or something to pay lessons or to play accommodation. I went to have lessons with him about a month after. Amazing. But you'd never really heard him, had you, at this point? This was completely... So, sorry? I'm assuming that you'd never actually heard him play or anything like that. So no, no, just... no, no. This is what just from the right up yeah. was doing every month on the total guitar. So for me, he said, if this person can afford <laughs> this set worked on the total guitar every month for years. That's a years, very good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he has to be good. Yeah. Remember, that time I had no YouTube. I couldn't search for him and who oh. is this guy. So I was relying on this magazine, you know. Um, if you want, I can find one because I have them all there, all, all my magazines. That's amazing. One second. Go on, then. Let's see. Let's see. I found one good thing to begin. So these are some magazines that I still have. Let's see, if there was to be adverts here. That's how I found about the RGT as well. Yeah. One second. There so wants to be somewhere. Ah, yeah, obviously, this, you read these those magazines. Magazines. Mark, you must have read those magazines from cover to cover. Okay. You must have read every single thing in those oh, magazines. I learned how to read English from these magazines. <laughs> I didn't know how to read English, how to understand English, I remember. Oh, that's <laughs> I was about 12, you know? Yeah. <laughs> School is telling me, you need to read, you need to read. No, I don't want to read. I want to play football, let's play guitar. Yeah. Then when I discovered these magazines, I had to read. I had to learn how to read. It's brilliant. So, so, <laughs> so okay, so because uh, I wanted to mention about John Mazzarola, because I think that's quite interesting, because that really makes you, there's lots of things that you said that, you know, the experience that you had with the teacher that you had in Malta sort of influenced how you taught group lessons. And, all that uh -huh. and I think that's, that's the, the thing that every experience that you have, I mean, you sort of take something from it, don't you? And you, you yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And I think that's an important thing. And maybe, you know, we we're talking at, at the very beginning when I was saying that I think it's important when you, like when I came to Malta, about the, seeing how you were living, you know, what culturally what happens. And because it feeds, like, your determination to play, because you have a passion to play. Um, I don't, you don't see a lot of that here. You don't see that sort of passion. That's just, not just a passion to play the guitar, but just a passion for things uh -huh. that you sort of go like, no, this is what I think. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do, you know, <laughs> um, and, and throw everything at it. You know, I don't see that so much now. It, it, <laughs> and, you know, it's a little bit too easy here now. Mind you, it might not be so. <laughs> it's not going for it. In well, in the UK. <laughs> We've had a succession of terrible politicians, good as well. Oh, well, don't start with that. Huh? <laughs> don't start with that. I know, it's probably not as any good out there either, is it, really? No. No. No comment. No, it's not. <laughs> I know, I know. But in actual fact, I, I, there is something in that thing of the music that we had back in the 1950s and 1960s here in the UK and the, and the economic situation at that time in Britain, particularly in the 1950s, was terrible. And I actually think that that is what created such a lot of art here. 
you see. Yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. And you tell me about passion. I have passion. And okay, I still have the same passion for guitar, but as I said, I'm exhausted. So I have another passion. If you look here, I built this gigantic sim simulator. Oh my God. That is that is from COVID, you know. But the passion is <laughs> that one moves like this, like this, you know, with the seat. It gives you one G. <laughs> that is something very oh, so it's like you're flying a plane. Uh, <laughs> but passion is because if you're young, I remember when we were when I was young, 1980, we had none, we had nothing. And the house, I used to play with. Everything I find and stones, you know, every, yeah. we used to have fun on the streets, playing on the streets with, only with a ball, you know. I still remember the best day of my life when my father bought me a bicycle. I still remember it. It's still here, you know. Like, wow, what's that? Wow, it's still yeah. here in my mind, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then when you buy an amplifier and listen to the sound, wow, you are overprotective. You only want to practice, you want to get the full potential, you know? But if you're five and you have like laptop, mobile, have everything, yeah. there is no there is not going to be any passion. No. You know? you, you, I totally agree with it. The problem That's... is that if you have a child, you can't leave her leave them without a laptop. Or without a mobile, because he's going to feel less than other kids. Yeah. So the thing that people are going to be passionate, it has to come from very um, special families that they have, like both parents dedicated to their children, like it was in my case. You know, my mother uh, and didn't work. It was, uh, you know, and always gave me like sense of belonging, sense of responsibility, mm. sense of appreciation that this in your father works a lot. You, if you want a guitar, you want to be sure that I still remember when my father bought me the first guitar. No, because now they bought, they, okay, want to learn guitar, let's buy him a Gibson. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's jaw dropping. It's, it's good, mind. yes. Obviously, it's good. <laughs> but yeah, I remember I was playing on this guitar, like this, trying to play a C major. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's good or bad? No, that thing, I think it gives you the passion if you really like the thing that you are doing. You are going to keep on fighting, fighting until you achieve it. Yes. Yes, that is so, so true. And... Um, that is what it scares me nowadays. And yeah. the problem is, honestly, I'm telling you this. In my case, I used to say, okay, if I have a child, I will not bring it like my father with all the discipline, you know, let's be more open, you know. It don't work. I can tell that it still don't work. If you do that, it didn't work for me. <laughs> uh, if you're not, like, you need to come at home like 10 30, or else you'll get punished. If you are if you are open with your child, your child is not your friend. You have to have the discipline, you have to have the so you gotta have, yeah, you got yeah, you gotta learn limits of some description, yeah. Um yeah, what I'm doing, the passion comes if you don't have not. I remember I had really nothing, really nothing. I used to remember, I used to save like 10 lira multis and go to Valletta and buy a book to learn like, uh, I'm comfortable enough. Okay, so I need to put the first finger here, second finger and play, okay. Then I press the M cassette and try to <laughs> match the, sound you know it was like that exactly so you know i obviously i interview quite a lot of british guitar players who are sort of contemporary with me and of course you learn off records 
you worked it out note for note. And because the music books, they either didn't exist or they were in the wrong key or they were completely wrong. <laughs> Right, or they were, uh, or they were for piano. <laughs> yeah, well, they were basically written by pianists. Who um, it was like, well, it's easy to play this in the key of C. So you know, something a Beatles song that would have been in the key of E, like Day Tripper, for instance. You know, you know, you got your E riff. No, they'd write that out in C because it's nice and easy to pick out. But um, yeah, it's crazy. So yeah. everything was worked out off the record. But of course, by doing that, you get such a good ear, don't you? Yeah, you definitely. just got to sit and go through it. And what amazed me today that I teaching and I have a student and I will tell him what songs are you are you trying to play? None. Exactly. Why are you playing guitar? Why you are not playing yeah, exactly. metal? Yeah. You know, or music, I don't or... listen to much music. I go, but people say, really? Yeah. Wow. What's that? Wow. And the other one that gets me, and I say this because this I think this is quite refers to what goes on now. Do you listen to music? Yeah. What do you listen to? Oh, well, I don't know what they're called. Because it's all streamed, right? So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You see, you do, so, so my normal thing is, like, okay, so let's say you get really good at playing this. Would you like people to listen to your songs and they don't know it's you? Wouldn't you like that? No. Well, there we go. But I it's know not, who it is that you're listening it's not going to work. Same thing, because I remember I used to say, like, to buy a cassette, and you have that cassette for a month. You have to listen to it for 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 the whole month. You know. Sorry. No, sorry, don't worry. Okay. You have to listen to it for the whole month, so you know all the <laughs> lyrics, <laughs> all Everything. the songs in order. Yeah. Absolutely, you need I to know. I can it. tell you, use your illusion to the order of yeah. the songs. I haven't heard that album for twenty years, but the first song is Civil War. You know, uh, I still know the songs of that album because I have I heard it for like two years, three hours, four hours a day. The same album going on the cassette. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. So there's a lot to be said for that, isn't there? And I think that's, that's, and of course, it's not just to do with music, really, for kids now. They're absolutely bombarded by things. And I'm not really sure how, how good that is for them. But anyway, that's not our problem. 2020. It's somebody else's problem. <laughs> yeah, that's not my problem, definitely. <laughs> absolutely. Anyway, Mark, there's brilliant stuff. And uh, have you got some, okay, we'll put some stuff on the show notes and things. I, I mean, you, I'm assuming you've got some, Links on YouTube and stuff are you playing, have you? Because yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. Yes. Uh, you see yeah. how yeah, want, want people to see how terrific the guitar playing you are. You want me to send you something last thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, just send me some links to to whatever you've got and, and I'll, I'll stick them on the show notes, right? So oh, people can okay. look at what you do. Let me find. I don't put these that much often, but let's see what I find here. So one interesting thing that you mentioned, and I didn't realise this, you said that you were into videotape editing. Sorry? You said you were, you were sort of getting interested in sort of video tape Oh, editing. that was something that... <laughs> yeah, I know. But something that really struck me was that you had lots of hard drives full of video footage of people like Django Reinhardt. And I remember you having all this stuff. Yes, I still have them. Yes. Uh, yeah, so that really impressed me because it was like an archive, like a library of all these great players that you'd sort of <laughs> found somewhere. I'm finding some links. One second. Let me check. So this is the last show about a month ago. Uh, chat. Yeah. Right, mm. okay, that's cool. Brilliant stuff. So yeah. I'll put all this stuff on, all right? And people can check this out. And I recommend that people find your stuff because it's it's great. Cool. Now yes, that's probably if, you, if you check online, you can you can Yeah, find yeah, I'll, I'll I'll check out a few bits and pieces but they will be on the show notes. That's great. Anyway, it's brilliant talking to you again, Mark. It's good to see you, mate. I appreciate it. I appreciate no, it. No, no, it's great. Thanks for your time. Because, you know, I like to chat, as you know. <laughs> uh, we're only missing the whiskey this time. 
Yeah, I'm I no alcohol for me anymore. No, okay. I'm not drinking anymore, honestly. No, but it used to be. I used to, I used to, not, not yes, I know. anymore. I, know. I was there. I remember <laughs> my body, it's not allowing any more alcohol. No, that's, that's okay. It, that's it, it is making me if I try to drink, it it makes me uncomfortable, not, yeah. not okay, so yeah. I think that's that's a yeah. It's another thing that when you're younger, you can sort of do that stuff. <laughs> That's cool. Anyway, great to speak to you. And, uh, Thanks, see you. It was always a pleasure. Definitely. See you soon. Oh, that's great. All pleasures, my mate. Mm-hmm.